This portion of Good Morning America is brought to you by Dream Whip and Jell-O Brand Instant Pudding. Together, they made Dream Pie delicious. 8.30, I'm David Hartman with Joan London. Almost everybody, I think, knows that George Harrison was one of the Beatles. Uh, but a lot of people don't know that George Harrison is an experienced movie producer as well. A few years ago, he produced a Monty Python movie called The Life of Brian. Ah! And there he is. He's got a new movie coming out. A little bit later, we're going to talk with George Harrison about that, live by satellite from London. He's with us. George, good morning, or good afternoon, I guess, over there. Good morning, America. Good morning, David. Nice to have Thank you with you. us, George. Good to have you with us, and we'll look forward to talking with you in just a little while. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Rare opportunity. Rare yes, opportunity. It is. Yeah, just oh, so. and then we are going to have another rare opportunity. Are you ready for this? We are going to see, and I'm sure here, a down home North Carolina event called a pig picking party. Now, I don't know what that is, and I'm not going to ask. <laughs> we'll just wait and find out. But first, here's Steve Bell with the news. Mountains and the wonderful music of uh, that part of the United States. Right now, live, we are going to uh, someone who uh, represents a slightly different kind of music, at least in our memory. And we're going live by satellite to London at uh, 17 before 9. Uh, the man I'm talking about is George Harrison. He is a man of so many talents, a former Beatle, as you all know. He's a fine musician, composer, writer, and in recent years, he has also become a movie producer of some note. Uh, he also lives a rather private life now. He rarely grants interviews, and this morning we're delighted to have George Harrison with us uh, from London Live. George, it's a pleasure meeting you, and it's nice to have you with us. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Could you hear any of that music, that uh, that yeah. picking you just heard? How did it sound? I did. Yeah, Blue Ridge Mountains. It sounded like you were interviewing pigs. <laughs> Is that right? You were, you're close. Something about pigs. <laughs> you got it. George, yeah. let's talk about the movie, Time Bandits, which I yeah. had, had the pleasure of seeing yesterday. It hasn't been released yet, as you know. It's going to be released very soon in the, uh, in the States. You wrote the score. You also produced it. How would you describe it, briefly? How would you describe the movie? Because it is unusual. Yeah, it's, well, that's it. It's, uh, it's quite unusual. I think it's, it's a sort of good film for children, mainly, but um, it's also quite good for adults. It's uh, a bit crazy, you know, being a, a spin-off of the Monty Python group. That is, it was written by Michael Palin and uh, Terry Gilliam. It has uh, Michael Palin and John Cleese in it. So it has a little bit of, um, you know, the usual sort of Monty Python sort of stuff, but at the same time, it's, um, it's quite a thriller, you know, the way it looks. The film is uh, really well shot. It's Terry Gilliam is the director. He's the American one in Monty Python. And uh, he's the one who normally does the animation. So he's done the special effects and uh, directed the film. George, let me and interrupt you. I, what I might do yeah. is, is we might show, uh, show our viewers here a little bit of the movie so they'll have an idea what you're talking about. That's a good idea. Uh, the, the, what we're about to see uh, are the, the traveling bandits. Now, these are bandits. They go from, from one place in time to another by sort of dropping yeah. through these holes Should in I, space, right? Yeah, well, if I would just tell the audience briefly, um, the idea is that the supreme being, when he was making uh, creation, well, everything that got done late on a Friday afternoon, you know, had a few holes in it. So he had these little, uh, little people working down in the small shrubs department, and they were patching up the holes in everything. And they ran away with the map that shows all the holes in the space and time, and they're trying to escape from the supreme being, but at the same time, Evil, who's always not far behind, is trying to catch them because he'd like the map for his own use. So take good, it away. All right, good, good description. Now let's look. The little people and what they have done is busted into a little boy's bedroom, and now they're trying to find a way out. They need to get their way out and get back into space. Watch this from Time Bandits, produced by George Harrison. Watch. I don't know anything. You know, and you're not going to tell us. Well, I'm getting angry, and vermin here is getting hungry. I don't Me 
never start on one. Who ever heard of anybody starting anything on one? Which is it then? Two or three? Three! <laughs> They didn't, George, we just saw them as they, you weren't able to yeah. see it, but just as they came, they, they, they went into space, uh, people should know that they, they land in Napoleon's time, <laughs> in That's Napoleon's true, time. Yeah. Right? yeah, they just keep going, you know, from one thing into the next. It's quite a good idea, actually. Wish I'd thought of it. <laughs> yeah, but you're involved. You've made it happen. We're going to break for a commercial, George, and then we'll come back and talk some more. Okay. Back in a second. It's uh, 12 minutes uh, before a nine or eight. We'll be back with more of George Harrison in just a moment after the first from Style Shampoo. I'm shouting all about love. Well, they cheated you like a dog. I'm shouting all about love. Well, they cheated you like a dog. Ten minutes uh, before nine right now, we're back with George Harrison, live from London. The music you just heard is from his newest album. It's called Somewhere in England. Hi, George. Again, we're back on Hi. live right now. Uh, you've been involved with the, the Monty Python, the group, the gang, for quite some time now. You said one time that you you got involved after the Beatles uh, because it helped you to kind of bridge the years when there wasn't much happening. What did you mean by that? Yeah, in the late 60s, uh, when Monty Python first came on television in the UK, well, <clears throat> there was, um, you know, what the Beatles were representing or were trying to, you know, we were trying to be something new. <clears throat> we're trying to, uh, you know, give some alternatives and likewise in the comedy situation, everything was pretty boring, I thought. It was uh, pretty much the same for years and years. And then Python came along with this totally off the wall type of humor and, uh, you know, they were sort of laughing about most of the things which uh, should be laughed about, I think. You know, the government and <laughs> just the way we all are. I mean, the usual right. things. And they didn't really leave much unturned, many stones unturned, really, in their humor. And it just filled in that period, you know, between, uh, like, going into the 70s. It got a bit depressing, I think, after the 60s. And uh, it's good to have a laugh, you know. It's good if there is something to keep you smiling. George, I, I would imagine there's, uh, at least I sense, that there's always been kind of a pressure on you um, and Paul and Ringo to keep, to keep producing, to keep turning things out, um, and particularly perhaps you and Paul. How has that pressure affected you over the last, say, 10 years? Well, I, I don't think there's... Uh, there's that much pressure to produce, um, I think you're talking about records yeah. or music. Uh, there's not too much pressure in order to do that, but at the same time, it's what we do, it's what we have done in the past, and, uh, you know, everybody needs to make a living or do something just to keep themselves busy, and so might as well continue doing the thing that we, we learned. You know, we sort of did our apprenticeship. The thing that's... Uh, I think the pressure is coming now from the other way because uh, the record business as a whole, it's, you know, everybody's in the record business, everybody and their grannies, you know, they're all <laughs> songwriters, everybody has million dollar record deals to the point where the record business is so saturated that uh, a sort of rot set in, actually, uh, with the radio and nobody knows what people want or they some people think they know what the public want, so it's got this great confusion. So I think uh, the most difficult thing is just to try and continue and try to do what comes natural and uh, hope that somehow it still fits into 
the picture. Mm -hmm. George, you wrote a beautiful song after John Lennon died all those years ago, and one of the couplets in it, you wrote, living with good and bad, I always looked up to you, unquote. Um, how did you, how did he influence, John influence you, and how did you influence him, do you think, through the years? Well, it would be pretty hard to say <clears throat> just in uh, a minute or so, but, yeah. um, you know, we grew up together. We, uh, from the age of about, maybe I was about 13 when I first met him. He was uh, a tough guy, you know, he, he wanted to do something different and like, likewise so did I and Paul. And uh, so we gained strength from each other, really, like that. He was always the noisy one or the... Uh, <laughs> You know, the cheeky one, the pushy one, he'd be a bit more outspoken than, than the others. Um, and at the, at the same time, I think that was important. You know, we had all those elements, John being, you know, a bit upmarket with the intellectuals and Paul being cute and, you know, Ringo being cuddly and I was the quiet one. <laughs> so, I mean, it all, it all sort of worked out. But, you know, it would be difficult to say, hello, what was that? Beep, beep. I don't know. You're okay, I think. Something beeping in my Dinners. headphone. But it would be hard to say just in a minute, you know, right. because we grew up together. We spent many, many years together and... Uh, but a lot of love and respect. Yeah. Both. So, I mean, the song really, it helps having music. Hello, somebody's on the telephone here in Are my they? ear. Whoever's yeah. in... Whoever's in George's ear, get out of George's ear. <laughs> All right, uh, George, our time is up yeah. anyway, so we'll, we'll let them talk in your ear if they want to. Thank you very right. much for joining us All today. Right. Good luck See with the later. movie. Good luck with Time Bandits. Thank you. Bye-bye. Th thank you, George. Okay, thank you. We will be back in just a minute. It's uh, almost four months before nine. Back after these words from Lipton. George Harrison from London.